Welcome to the Wednesday Call Live! Filmed before a live studio audience in beautiful Burlington, North Carolina. Please welcome your guest hosts for today's episode, James and Jane Hill! What Dr. Rock was cooking or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Some chicken. Some chicken. <laughs> we are James and Jane, mm -hmm. hired by Andy and Jane Albright, and we have the honor, privilege. Thank you so much, Andy, for putting the faith and trust into us. Thank you. Like, you know, to, do the, <laughs> to do the TWC right, like, right after a huge event, uh, like family reunion. Are um, you reminding us of the pressure? Is that what you're doing right now? <laughs> oh, I, can't, I just can't believe uh, okay. uh, we really appreciate it. So um, we're going to kick things off. Got a lot of stuff to cover. Very short amount of time to do it in. Um, some announcements. Mm -hmm. First off, you want to... You want to do these first? Yeah, I mean, you can say the names. I'll put, I'll put the stickers I up. can say the names. You can say the names. Who we got here? Well, first off, we got people going to Alaska, the great Alaskan <laughs> frontier. Mm -hmm. That's right. Ocean of the sea. I already ordered water shoes. Water <laughs> shoes. <laughs> I was told we needed them. She was like, you, you should pick out the water shoes. And I'm like, I have no idea anything about water <laughs> shoes. Uh -huh. I don't know. I guess uh -uh. we're going on the glacier or something? What's I the don't water know. Shoes There's something for? on YouTube that said, yeah, there was something that would be useful in Alaska. So I was like, all right. Mm -hmm. Good to go. <laughs> well, our good buddy and pal, Fitz and Heather Fitzgerald. Are <laughs> I think, what do you I think Fitz would want to go? I said I was going to put it up. Okay. And you said you could say the name. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, 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 I gotta see where, where do you think Fitz would want to be? I think Fitz would want to be over here somewhere. Oh, in the Haven or something? Haven or something. All right, okay. That's we'll where, I, right. That's where okay. I think We'll Fitz. go there. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Going to Seattle. To Seattle. Oh. So earned, this is the so extension. So he earned the trip, now he's earning the extension. Wow. We're right. We're barely six months over the cut, though. He's already got the extension. Mm -hmm. Already got the extension. Mm -hmm. This is Robert Sarge Wilson. <laughs> So that means there's still time for everyone getting started right, right now. Like there is still time. We just have to push. All right. Okay. That's right. That's right. And over here, let's see here. We need the power of ten. Or well, first thing okay. we're gonna do, I guess, uh, managers year to date. Paul Roberts. I can't tell. Is there like uh, how many points do they need to be able to? Oh, look at there. Wow. Ah, look ah. at that. Look at that. Eight people already on the manager side. That's right. Paul Roberts, number one. Right. Paul Roberts, number one. Put in that Z05 gas or something like that. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> the the Z05 uh, is the car that he is. Uh, his bet. Oh, Corvette. a Corvette. Okay, yeah. I know what that is. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a, that's a fancy Corvette. Oh, it's a it's regular a fancy Corvette. Corvette. That's like the okay. nicest Corvette okay. you can possibly All right. get. I'm following you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Personal production. Year to date. Mark H, Brandon B, Brant Swindell. So these are all the people that have already won. We got 21 people. 21 people. Halfway and through the year. And look at this. Look at this. Merlene F. She's a, you need 115,000 points. She's got 114,256. The first year Jane and I started, that's how much we missed our first trip by. Because back in the day, you said, Don't like, do what we did. Yes. Back in the day, Don't do that. on a Tuesday, it was, uh, you know, we had multiple trips. That you, so you would have to like try to split them up between all the carriers. So we'd try to win this one and this one, and then we'd end up missing both oh. by this much. Mm. Memories. Go, Rage. Y'all got it so much. Memories. <laughs> Coming up from the alliance. <laughs> <clears throat> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I know, right? Power <laughs> 10. Woo! 
Manalda. Manalda C. And Benjamin. You worked That's right. Uh -huh. Benjamin. Good job. All them yeah. Ten, that means they had ten policies issue paid with us so far in the alliance. Like they've got started with us and they've gotten up to ten. Like there's a that's a good like uh you know you know, what's that where you put the the rope down so the the whale can learn to get like that's how they learn to jump right, over what do you call it? I just said the bar. The bar. <laughs> yeah. The lower the bar. That's that bar. Like once. Statistically speaking, when people hit that bar, that's like a sign like, hey, this might be somebody we need to take mm -hmm. a little notice of. Yep. Yeah. Put yeah. a little, little more effort, energy, and right. money or something into. Because mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. they're moving. That means uh, not just that they wrote 10 policies, but they issued 10 right. policies, right? They got 10 deposits coming through. You know how you believe it, but then once you get paid, you're like, oh my God, it really works. You know, that's, yeah. an, important, that's an important moment. Yeah. That's so, right. mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, yep. Our topic today is just got back from conference. James, Jane, I'm all fired up. Now what? <laughs> what do I do next? And how do I stay on the path? Right. So uh, I'm going to step back for a little, here a little bit and uh, hand it off to Jane so she can get things, kick things off. Yay. That's right. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> So, um, okay, so we thought uh, we would share a little bit about, you know, you were at family reunion and that was really great. It was a wonderful environment, it was excited, but we all went back to our own reality, right? We all, we all came back to our own reality. And um, I thought we would share some of the reality that we went through when we were first getting started, okay? Um, because I was talking to a couple of our agents about some of the stuff that James and I went through as we were getting started. And one of our agents, Mr. Leo Altador, was like, wow, I never knew you and James went through this stuff. And I want to hit him, Ivan, okay? <laughs> um, because I feel like we share some of the stuff a lot, you know? And um, he said, no, I figured you guys just went from selling insurance, or selling carpet to selling insurance, and that was it, that was fine. And I'm just like, oh my God, right? Um, so I think partially, maybe it's because I don't, I don't like sharing some of it because I don't want to relive it, if that makes sense to anybody, right? And I also didn't think anyone wanted to hear it, you know? Because um, even when we're going through it, like we smiled when we're at hot spots, you know, we smiled when we're at corporate. Um, but people say like, but that's fake. You know, you're being fake. And I'm like, ah, you know, because people will also say, I can't do that, Stephanie. You know, I, I'm the type of person that I wear my heart on my sleeve. You know, I just let people know how I feel. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's nice, you know. But that's, that's out, if you think of it, in some ways. Because if you have kids, you have been fake. You have lied to your children, okay? <laughs> if you deny that you have lied to your children, I'm sorry, there's one. <laughs> No, no, you're lying right now, right? <laughs> I should know who's in my audience before I say this stuff, right? Um, okay, but um, there's a difference in I just tell it like it is to you're just almost trying to keep the, bring the room down so that way they can commiserate with you. There's a, good, there's a difference, right? So Jeff Wright helped me with this, and um, I, I don't think I ever considered it being fake. I think I considered it being uh, considerate if that makes sense. Because no one wants to hear someone moan and complain all the time. Like if you're ever walking down the hallway and people kind of avert their gaze, it's because they're tired of you hearing you talk about your knees for the past 10 years, you know? Like, come on. Like we gotta talk about something else, you know? So today I'm being told to um, be inconsiderate and just tell you some of the things that we went through. And our situation is, this is not to share that ours is better or worse or whatever, right? It's just, it is what it is, period, okay? So sometimes I think James doesn't remember a lot of this stuff. I really don't. I don't think he remembers. Um, but they happened, OK? Uh, and I think that it's because there's a saying that successful people really don't remember a lot of the bad things they went through. They don't. Um, because they replay and they remember the good things, right, that happened. All right? All right. You, you stepped away. I my, just uh, kept talking. My uh, mm -hmm. mic needed to be fixed. 
Oh, so, okay. Um, take this one. Yeah. So, you got to remember. you got to remember. The story she's about to tell you, that's her account. <laughs> true, but true and accurate account. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't remember half this stuff. I know you don't. I still love you. Prove it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. So, uh, <laughs> all right, we have, um, okay, going back to successful people, all right? We have 80,000 thoughts that go through our mind every single day. Did you know that? 80,000 thoughts. And 98% of them are the same as yesterday. Mm -hmm. This is true, okay? Scientists and psychologists and all of you people not, you know, have, have discovered this. Um, and 80% of them are negative. Mm. Okay? So I think successful people have tricked themselves into replaying positives. That's what gives them the confidence to kind of like keep going, you know, because they're not replaying all the bad things that happened yesterday and last week and last month, which is clearly a trick that I'm still trying to master. So, all right, when we got started, um, besides having no money in the bank, uh, we also owed $80,000 on credit cards. And you know what interest is like on credit cards. Mm -hmm. It's like Patrick and Susie Connor's kids multiplying. You know? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so the debt was accumulated, right? The debt was accumulated from real estate, okay? Uh, investments that we tried to do. We didn't buy a bunch of stuff. Um, we were trying to invest in real estate. We had made almost 200000 like the year before, but we were living off of 35000 mm -hmm. right? Because we were trying to invest the money. This is pre-Alliance, right? This is yeah. before we got here. And so James was driving his 2002 Honda Civic that was paid for. I was driving my car that was paid for. Like, we didn't make a bunch of money and go out and spend it. We were right. trying to invest it and do what all the books taught us so that we could have what the books were talking about, right? Um, so where we were was not just broke, but drowning in credit card debt trying to figure out how to make phone calls, which is, you know, because it's sometimes a kicker when you already feel broken, you know, um, trying to figure out how to run appointments, and then um, trying to justify driving to an appointment when you weren't even sure that they were going to be there because you didn't want to spend the gas money to go there. Right. Don't raise your hand, but you know what I'm saying, yeah. right? Yeah. So we lived in a four-bedroom house, um, and we couldn't afford the mortgage anymore because at the time it was the 2008 crash. Mm. And some of you are so young, you can Google this, but uh, it was a thing that, that happened. Okay, 2008 crash. And I am not blaming the crash for our economic situation. I'm not. Um, there's people who didn't lose everything in 2008. We, we, we did. It was just where we were, who we were, right? The financial decisions that we made up until that point. Um, but the job that we had, we were selling carpet. They cut our appointments in half. They cut our commissions, like, mm -hmm. you know, so we were making a lot less than what we used to. So instead of losing our house, because we already lost the rental property that we had, um, we rented out three of the four bedrooms on mm -hmm. Craigslist, and we lived with other people in our house, right? And I'm not telling you you have to do this. I'm just telling you this is what we did, right? And, um, yeah, you know, sometimes roommates can be can make your nightmare a worse nightmare, <laughs> if that's even possible, you know? Um, so, some people move back in with their parents. Some people move back in with their parents. Um, I was dating a white guy, uh, as white as can be, right? And um, I uh, didn't go to law school, right? I was not ready to call my mother and be like, I messed up, I failed in life, and I need help. That was not going to happen. That was a conversation that was not going to happen, right? So, um, in, a, yeah. in addition to those roommates, James had a friend and a brother who lived in our insulated garage, right? It was heated and air conditioning, so there were more people living there. And um, one day, I came home, and well, his friend brought homeless people that he met outside of Walmart oh. to live uh, in our backyard. And James said, um, I'm going to, uh, James, I, I wrote out, can I have a whiteboard, please? I was, uh, I was trying to describe what his friend had built in our backyard. And James like, they're not going to understand. So his friend was trying to figure out how to build an island so um, he could live on an island and not pay a mortgage or rent. So I came home one day, and there was like some type of raft. That's not a pen. Don't ask. There was the some details, type of raft. Um, I don't bottom. know how to get a pen on the bottom. The oh, oh. There's a pen down here. All right. <laughs> I've done this before. All right. So he built some type of raft thing, and he bought 15-foot wood beams and built a teepee and put a tarp around this teepee, and the homeless people live there. Okay? So, because uh, he came home and he said, the Bible says 
we should take care of others and care. And I was like, use your crap. So, uh, hold on, hold on. So, what had happened was. <laughs> oh, are we going to do this? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to do the. That's her side. Uh -huh. So, what had happened was we were living in this house and we were renting to. He's going to somehow have, justify this pyramid. We had all right these, now, this teepee. Uh -huh. <laughs> we had all these uh, roommates and we were like, this is crazy, just so we can, didn't lose the house, right? So, we actually end I was like, we got to get out of here so we can focus. There's too many people here, so we were like, we'll keep renting out the house, and we'll go get a, another place for us. We and argued about this before the TWC about what happened. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so my brother and, and our friend that we grew up with are like, well, we'll, we'll take care of the house. And I was like, as long as the rent gets paid, as long as everything gets paid, that's fine. Like, I, they'd be awesome. Thank you so much, because we're going to go try to get this business rocking and rolling. So we came back and... They got this big old teepee in the backyard. We were living here when this thing got constructed. Okay. And, like, next thing you know, I got served papers that I was a slumlord. Um, apparently, there were multiple different peoples of homeless people that got invited at different times. And then uh, at one point, James says that there were sheds that his brother had built in the back and tried to rent out to people a day. So regardless, I got served papers as a slumlord. And I was like, um, that's, hmm. OK, so we have been fighting almost every single day. Lucky to have me. <laughs> we have been fighting almost every single day about, like, we need to find something else, right? Like, this is not working. Insurance is not working. The alliance is not working. Like, this isn't working. And James just kept saying, it's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Kill him, you know? And um, sometimes I would just look at him and be quiet. Just look at him. Sometimes I would cry. Sometimes I would yell. I'm sure you guys know I probably yelled a lot more than I was just quiet. All right. Um, I was like, do you see what's happening around us? Do you see this in our backyard? It is not working. Right. Um, uh, it was about that time. Here. There was a, one of the homeless people came in with a napkin that his friend had signed as a lease. It was a napkin lease that said he can now live there forever. And I was like, OK, I'm going to just walk out now. I'm going to just leave. Please. Please fix this. Please do something. Yeah, it was a napkin lease. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm pretty sure I left to go run appointments because appointments were reason for me not to be at home. Okay? So I did. I, uh, after I came home, they, they were gone. James said go talk to them, and I have no idea what he I said to them. I had to, to get them. my posse together. <laughs> <laughs> they, were like, they were like, no, we got this lease. Look, it's signed. And I'm like, that guy doesn't own the house. Like, he's renting from us. You can't re-rent. That's, that doesn't work like that. Yeah. And I was like, y'all need to go. Like, I can't, if you stay any longer, I'm going to have these squatters rights issues. I can't have this. No, y'all got to go. And they're like, no, we got this lease. We, we get, we got to look at it. And I was like, look, we, uh, I was like, they're, they're, oh, they're, she would, they were like. He's remembering right now. They're, uh, <laughs> He's yeah, literally remembering, remembering this. right they now. They threatened to call the cops. They're like, if you don't, if you don't leave us alone, we're going to call the cops. And I was like, here, use my phone. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> And then they were like, oh, he's, he's serious. Yeah. And then they were like, well, well, we'll leave. And then they had to run and get their bag of you know, stuff that's not legal. <laughs> and <laughs> run before the cops came. <laughs> <laughs> appointments and uh, I mean I can't I can remember crying like so often just being in my car running from appointment to appointment and I feel like at one point I could have mined salt from my car I cried so much in it you know and um, that was like that was our reality when we came back from conference and that wasn't just one conference that was at least three conferences this is like over the course of two years like different stuff like this was happening right and at one point um, it got a little better and we did move Right? And then that's when he thinks the TP went up. But the TP went up before then. All right? Um, things got a little better and a little worse. Um, and so we had money, then we didn't have money. Like it was, you know, there was a lot of that happened. But the place that we moved to, it was a commercial in the front and it was an apartment in the back. Right? So there was a commercial space that it's we. like Alex Abian's old haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Business in the front. <laughs> Party in the back. <laughs> so, um, so we lived there. And uh, at one point during a winter, we actually um, did
didn't have the money. It was heated by oil, and we didn't have the money to pay for the oil, right? So this is a winter in Maryland. I get that it's not a winter in Minnesota or winter in Maine, but we shut off the oil. Like, we could not afford to turn on the heat, uh, to pay for the oil to, to keep it going. And so we had a space heater, like, in the back of our apartment, like, one space heater, and it's winter in Maryland. I'm from Southern California. I had an electric blanket. In San Diego. All right, here It was amazing, right? Um, cold-blooded. I am. She's cold-blooded. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Owens sent me a text, cold heart, cold, <laughs> that was just like, <laughs> Mr. Owens. All right. Um, but... One day a week, we would turn on the oil for the hot spot. That was when we turned it on. Wow. And see, this is the thing. We had money, right? But James was using that money to invest in ads, mm -hmm. right? Like, we were using it to buy leads. And because he's still thinking it's going to work, right? And even though it wasn't working for us as good as we wanted it to, we knew it would work. Well, honestly, James knew it would work. I was just wanting to kill him every day, you know? Um, <laughs> But he, it was a choice of where we put the money, right? And that office is where we met Paul Minichino. Yep. Like, while we're going through all of that, that's where we met Paul Minichino. And the office address was 184 Mayo Road. <laughs> and Paul was skeptical when he first talked to James, right? And he was like, okay, I'm going to drive out there. It was an hour and a half to drive out there. And he swears he thought that he was going to get there and there was going to be a jar of mayo <laughs> with a sign, ha-ha, right, for just making him drive out there, you know? But that's where we met Paul Minichino, you know? So, um... All right, uh, but uh, we could see that it would work. It just wasn't working right now, right? I, I mean, we were getting deposits and everything, but we came into the alliance with a lot of baggage, like a lot of money that we owed, like a lot of negative. I'm not saying that you have to go through any of this stuff. I'm just saying we came in in the red. Yeah, I, th you know. I think a lot of people don't understand. They, they come into this business, they don't, like we didn't come into this business knowing what to do like when we came here when we when we first saw the alliance we were screwed up messed mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. like we were trying to figure things out still figuring things out Shoot. you know mm -hmm. trying to figure out the like just basics of how to how to be a bit how to be in business because you know you can go get a job and you don't really have to like know how to do things there'll be somebody else tell you how to do it and you know, whether you do it well or not, you'll still really get a paycheck. Like, so we were trying to learn how to become a business owners. So, you know, so it's, we, we had all, we had screwed up all this stuff because we didn't have somebody to tell us. Like, we were trying to figure everything out on our own. We didn't have a mentor. We didn't have somebody to, like, hold our hand and walk us down the path. Well, we were doing the real estate he's talking about. Yeah, 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 doing the real estate and all that. We were just trying to, we, we'd read it out of a book and we'd be like, all right, well. Let's try this. Let's try it. And you'll learn way more doing that than you will, you know, just sitting there reading a book and just watching YouTube videos. Like, you actually got to, if you want to learn how to play the game, you got to pick up the controller, right? You can watch somebody else play a video game all day long, but until you actually pick up the controller, you ain't going to learn how to do the moves and throw them Dragon Balls and all that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> so... You can't also just push all the buttons and beat the opponent, too. <laughs> button master. We tried pushing all the buttons and, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's how we so, ended up in the eighty thousand debt. You know, yeah. But uh, you, people, th uh, they hear this story and, and they got to understand. Like we, we came to this business broken. Like we, we didn't break the business. <laughs> <laughs> we came that way, um, and this is this is what we. Some of the things that we hope to God, y'all don't have to go through half the stuff. Any of the stuff that like you go through your own darn stuff, mm -hmm. and don't have pe your brother building teepees in your backyard, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> running out to homeless people. <laughs> so James was still posting ads. Um, I was still running appointments because I figured it was better than sitting there and just getting angry or sitting there and being depressed, right? And, um, but, you know, like James is saying, like when it comes to business, it doesn't necessarily look like what, it may not look exactly like what you thought it was going to look like when you got started, right? Because the sales part, the sales part, like you go out, you get the leads, you make the sales, you close the deals, like that, that's just like bam, 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 bam. So you can, we were making $100,000, $150,000 a year selling insurance. See, memories totally different. <laughs> totally different memories. Uh -huh. So we, I was taking that money. Totally different memories. <laughs> I was taking that money and reinvesting it. Reinvesting it. So people, you know, we're making sales. But I was, I was not trying to live off my personal sales. I wanted to build 
a massive business. Also, why important for you to record your phone when you're making phone calls <laughs> and record your in-home because what you remember happening in that home and why you didn't make that sale and what actually happened in that home and why you didn't make that sale, you know, yeah. right? Because we remember things very differently, all right? <laughs> okay. I'm just saying, we do. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, um, but yeah, like, um, but all because business doesn't look like what you thought it was going to look like when you first got started does not mean that the business is wrong for you, right? Who thinks marriage looks exactly what you thought it was going to oh. look like when you got married, right? It's not, right? Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm not saying in a good or bad way, just different, right? And raising your kids, right? Did you have a certain picture of what it was going to look like mm -hmm. to raise your children? And like what reality is, is not bad or good. It's just, it's different, right? You wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. It's just, it's different, right? It doesn't mean you shouldn't be a parent. It's just different. All right. Um, yeah. No. I mean, you, those of you who already have kids. Okay. Um, okay. So. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So maybe some of you came back to a reality that was um, where a lot of problems were caused by money. Like that was our reality. Like a lot of our problems were caused by money. Maybe you guys came back to a reality that was more um, problems around family or maybe problems around health, or problems around just other things. But all I know is we all came back to our own reality, right? So the question is, um, are you going to work? Because otherwise, your reality is going to stay that way. And that can be a very scary thing to think it's going to stay that way for the next 20 years, 40 years, right? Um, I shared this in the women's seminar. Uh, and I said, uh, there is a saying. I'm, I'm sure you guys have heard of it, that um, it says the world can't give you or won't give you more than what you can handle. Have you guys heard of that saying before? Okay, I think it's a lie. All right? <laughs> I don't think that saying is true. I think the world can plenty give you more than what you can handle by yourself. Yeah, that was the key, right? See, he wasn't in the men's seminar. Okay. <laughs> but, um, right, I think the world can give you a lot more than what you can handle dot, 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 by yourself. But that's why it's so important to have a community, right? And your community can be these conference calls, the TWC, the hotspot. If you don't have a local hotspot, it's still your community, right? People across the whole United States that you can reach out to. And your community are com people who share a common value, people who share a common goal, people who share common um, ambitions, right? That's your community. It's people like us. And people like us, your community, is not about your gender, it's not about your color, it's not about your background, it's people who share your same values. That's your community, right? These are the people fighting to change their reality, right? And that you're helping to fight to change those realities, right? That's our community. And those are the people who are with you even when you feel like you can't handle it on your own, okay? So, enough of the emotional stuff. Got it. Woo! All right. Okay, um, I mean, there was other stuff that happened um, with our, you know, when, but we're not going to go into all that. Okay, um, so regardless of your reality, regardless of the world spinning around you, uh, you have set some goals, right? Coming out of family reunion, you have set some goals. And if you weren't at family reunion, we missed you, but you can still set some goals. And you have 30, 60, 90 day goals. You set out goals for the next seven days. You set out your schedule, right? And um, maybe you're hitting the mark each time. Maybe you're one of those people like, I set this goal and now this is working and this is working. I hit this mark, which is amazing, right? Um, maybe life isn't allowing you to follow your pretty color coordinated schedule. Mm. Maybe that's where, right? Maybe that's where you are. So this is a huge, huge mindset thing which is to know and understand and take to heart that if you're not following that pretty little schedule or you're not doing the things that you said you were going to do, um, you are not broken. You are not broken. You're not broken. You're not broken. Right? Um, because I have thought that before, right? Like, I wrote out this pretty schedule. You know, it's all color-coded and it's, it's pretty, right? Um, and I won't follow through with my schedule. I won't wake up when I'm supposed to. I'm not on the phone exactly at the time that I said I was going to be, right? And I would berate myself, like, what's wrong with me? Right? Like, why can't I follow this simple thing? Like, I would just be like, I'm so 
freaking pathetic, right? I can't even do something so simple like making dials. And I would just berate myself. But it's not that you or I are broken. It's that what we're fighting against is our old habits, right? That's what we're doing. So um, how many of you think that willpower is unlimited? How many of you have heard me ask this question before? Cheaters. All right, OK. <laughs> so um, willpower is um, not unlimited. All right. We have a certain amount of willpower every single day. We do. Now, you can grow the amount of willpower that you have, OK, because it is a muscle. So you can grow it. But it's limited only to the amount that you have trained it. And that is the good news, is that we can train it. All right. Um, and some of you are looking at me like, I think willpower is unlimited. I think I have unlimited potential. And I would say, good for you. But that is not the case. All right. I was going to put on a pair of glasses and be like, let me tell you. All right. No. Um, but let me describe to you a day. So how many of you have decided, and you don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you have decided, I'm going to be good today? Right? right. I'm going to have a healthy breakfast. Yeah. And you do. You don't eat the donut, right? Even though someone bought Entenmann's and put it on the counter, right? You eat a healthy breakfast, right? Yeah, yeah, that's how you know it's not true, because there would not be any leftovers if that had that is also brought true. that. that is also true. <laughs> All right. And you're good, right? You take the stairs instead of the elevator, uh, right? It's lunchtime, and your coworker or your friend gets a hamburger, and you get a salad, even though you smell that hamburger. And you kind of are thinking, you bastard, right? And you, you know, like, whatever, I'm going to get a salad, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Slow it down okay. now. Slow it down. With water and a lemon, because you heard somehow that lemon is good for you, OK? All right, so you get a lemon. All right. And then you go home, and you do all these good things. You're taking care of the house. You're doing everything, right? And then right about the time. Around 11 o'clock, mm -hmm. guess what happens? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Chocolate cake. Oh. Mm -hmm. It is sitting on that counter taunting you, right? That's what it's doing, that chocolate cake, right? And why? Because you have exhausted your decision-making energy, and that cake is just there, all right? Um, you don't wake up and eat chocolate cake? Well, I mean, you can. You might, you know. But we don't do that, right? We eat it at 11 o'clock at night because we are tired. Right? You talk to agents, you talk to your kids, you talk to your husband, you are spent, you know? Um, and that's why, that inf that's why that infomercial happens at 11 and 1 o'clock at night, because that mop at 11 in the morning doesn't look cool. But at 11 o'clock at night, 1 o'clock, oh, that's a cool mop. Right? Because you, you have been worn down. Okay? Magical. That's what happens. Uh, okay, all that to say, you have to protect your decision making power, right? Your decision making energy. And we also have to grow that willpower. So we're going to talk about how to grow that willpower. So one, you do it by not beating yourself up, mm. right? And then you also do it by changing something little by little. So those are two ways to grow your willpower. So I know some people say, I'm just an all-in type of person. I'm 100% all the time or nothing. That's good. Good for you. All right. Um, and if that's the kind of person you are, that's wonderful. No, for real. That is an amazing quality, right? I don't have that quality. I'm just kind of like, oh, you're there. That's good. Stay, stay right there. That's good. You want to give me a hug? Oh, that's, that's nice. OK. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's not him. All right. OK. Um, but let's say you are the type of person that, grow, go, that wants to go all in all the time. That's a good thing. But if your approach hasn't given you the result that you want, then maybe it is time to change something, right? Because um, if we keep doing the same thing every day, that's the whole definition of insanity, right? So, um, OK, uh, like one example of that is uh, I was talking with an agent who said, I'm going to run as many appointments as I can this week. Who, who's heard that? Who's ever said that before? Mm -hmm. I've said that before. Mm -hmm. OK, I've said that before. And the problem with that, well, the, the, problem, the good and the bad thing with that is it sounds heroic. Yeah. It sounds dramatic. I'm going to run as many appointments as I can this week. The problem with that is it's not specific, right? Like, so we have to, so we took a step back, and I, I think I literally said that sounds heroic, but what specifically, like how many appointments specifically this week or tomorrow, like how many calls today, which doesn't sound as heroic or yeah. as fun or Let's do a baseline minimum right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, because, yeah, that's the problem is if you run one more than what you did last week, then you run more. But that's, that's not a problem if that's what you were trying to do. I want to make more money. Yeah. One dollar more? 
How much more? Yeah. Oh, you so made more. So we gotta get specific. So the uh, because all because you know that you should dial doesn't mean that we do. Who knows that? Right? All because we know we're supposed to doesn't mean that we actually do. All because we know we should eat a salad instead of a burger mm -hmm. doesn't like why there's a disconnect between what we know what we should do and what we actually do. They're two different things. And I have nothing against chocolate cake people, okay? Um, but if you're trying not to eat it, that would be the, the issue. You know, I have nothing against it. All right, so a way to help eliminate that um, using up your willpower and using up that decision making so that way it doesn't get fatigued, doesn't get weakened, is you prepare things the night before, the day before. So if you're gonna make dials in the morning, then you print out your leads, right? Or have your um, ERSs or your referrals, you already have them out. You have your activity book out. You have a couple of pens out. You have a charger for your cell phone out. And I know these are silly things, but how many of you have been in the middle of dialing and you're like, my phone's about to die? And then you get up and you go, go start looking for your phone, for a phone charger, you know, right? Or how many of you sit down and you're like, I don't have a pen that works, you know? And then instead of getting started dialing, you get up looking for a pen that doesn't work in your house. Well, you have so many pens, it's ridiculous, all right? Um, same here, okay. Um, but no, no computer if you, we get easily distracted. Like, you know yourself, right? If you're going to get distracted by the computer, don't dial where there's a computer, mm. you know? Um, so... That, that's a way to help, so that way you don't have to think about it. So that way when you get up, you just go and you just have to sit down. You don't have to think, do I have everything? Do I have this? Do I have that? And that, because that literally, it chips away at our decision-making willpower, right? Our energy. So this is an example that I'm going to use, and I want you to follow me because I do have a business-related thing that will do it. And if you're at the ACT, then this is a repeat. Uh, repeated example all right so this is an example from um, weight loss right so this is what happens at Weight Watchers once a week people come in and they weigh themselves in front of mm. a bunch of other people which that in itself is a little bit is it masochistic like is that self-inflicted pain like are you just you know right but that that's what they do they weigh themselves in front of a bunch of people and um, Oftentimes, before someone gets on that scale, before they step on, they say something like, I was doing really good. <laughs> this is, does this sound familiar? Mm. I was doing really good until Friday. I had 37 points left on Friday. And then I went out with some friends, and I had 10 points too many. And then I felt really, really bad. I felt really, really bad. So then I ate 208 points. This is a common thing yep. that happens, right? Yep. And logically, it makes no, no sense. sense when you hear it, right? Logically, it makes no sense. You're 10 points over. That really didn't affect your weight loss thing at all. And somehow, you feel so much guilt and shame over it that you do more of the thing that you're trying not to do, right? OK, um, so here's the business related example, okay? Um, don't, don't raise your hand, right? But have you ever done this? Mentally, you can raise your hand, all right? Um, you have the best intentions, and you set your alarm for 30 minutes earlier than you normally get up, okay? Um, but then you fall asleep a little later than what you had planned on doing because something happened, and insert whatever reason right there, right? And so in the morning when the alarm goes off, you hit snooze, and you hit snooze, because back in the day, we used to have actual alarm clocks, kids. You know, it was a clock that was by your bed that blinked at you, not your phone, okay? Um, I'm just saying, that was, you know, people don't know that, right? I realize that, that they don't know what a clock is. Okay. Um, and then, so you sit there after you hit snooze however many times, and you're laying in bed. Before you even get out of bed, all you're doing is talking down on yourself. Cannot believe I did it again. Right? I said I was going to do it and I didn't do it. And you're laying in bed, and you're just beating yourself up. Now I'm going to be like making dials and all this stuff, right? So finally, you roll out of bed, right? And you get up. And instead of making dials, because you feel bad, now you just piddle. Piddle around the house and see this thing that needs to be moved, and piddle there and do that, and piddle there and do this, right? And um, then you somehow end up on the couch watching Netflix, OK? And. Uh, Maybe you miss your afternoon dials. Maybe you're looking at your phone and you're up one or you're 
someone cross line is just calling you and your phone's just ringing and you're just you're just staring at it right because you don't want to pick up the phone you don't want to pick it up because you don't want to answer because you don't want to talk to them because you don't want to tell them you didn't do the thing that you said you were going to do right so you just feel more guilty because they're calling you because apparently they care right and then you just feel more guilty right and then before you know it you don't even want to go to the hot spot because you don't want to be around all these people who are doing the thing that they said they're going to do, and I'm not doing the thing that I said I was going to do, right? And then so we retreat, and then before you know it, you keep retreating, and then you watch like a whole season of something on Netflix, right? Anyone know what I'm talking about? Don't raise your hand. Stranger Things. Wait, right. no. So um, research has shown that emotions like guilt and shame actually activate the pleasure center of our brain. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's very contradictory to what you would think it would do. It actually activates the pleasure center of our brain. So when something happens and we, meet our, we miss our morning dial session and we feel bad, so we retreat and then we do more of that opposite thing that we're trying not to do because it's actually activating a pleasure center in our brain. Mm-hmm, it does. But that's why gamblers gamble more. It's because it's releasing this pleasure center mm -hmm. in the brain. That's why we binge eat, because it's releasing a pleasure center in our brain, because we feel guilty, right? And um, yeah, it's actually a dopamine hit. It's so weird. Um, and that's why sometimes when you ask an agent how their dials are, dials are going or how their appointments are going, it, we do the verbal vomit thing again, right? Well, I was going to do dials, and then, you know, my kid got sick, or this happened, and then I ended up at the ER, and blah, blah, blah. So I couldn't make calls, and then I ended up sitting on the couch watching Netflix, right? Have you noticed what I might do? <laughs> all right. So. Um, i got to tell them all the secrets, baby. But, but logically, it makes no sense at all. Um, so you missed your morning dial session. Who cares? Right. You're 46 minutes late from dialing. It's 8.16 instead of 7.30. Who cares? Mm -hmm. Right? Just make the calls anyways. Just start from there. Yep. 8.16 is your new 7.30. Right? Yeah. You know? So, because when we feel, when we feel, when we feel guilty, it like, so why, that's why we don't follow our schedule. Okay? So what we are trying to do is not to feel guilty or feel shameful when we don't follow through. So that way we don't spiral out of control like that, right? Um, and instead of stopping the guilt and the shame, we got to re replace it. Because people don't ever stop doing something. They replace it with something else. That's why smokers don't actually quit smoking. They replace it with a new activity, right? That's usually why a lot of smokers can gain a couple pounds, because instead of smoking, you're eating something, right? But you don't have to replace it with eating. It just has, it just has to be replaced with something. Um, and so um, if you can, um, you want to replace the guilt and shame with gratitude. Because gratitude actually gives off a low level of dopamine in your brain, too. So when you speak gratitude, it does. When you feel gratitude, do you know this? It does. It actually is almost like you took a low dosage antidepressant. When you do, it is, except it's a natural high, right? Um, and it's not. Gratitude, I don't think it's natural. I think there are some of you people who wake up Pollyanna and sing with the sun, and that is all fine and dandy. I, Pollyanna, sing with the sun, right? Like the roses just bloom as you walk by, you know, which is just great for you, you know? <laughs> that does not have, like gratitude is something that I am trying to practice every day because I don't think that's a natural thing. And maybe it's not natural for all of us and we've all learned to do it at some point, you know? Uh, that's probably the, the more logical thing that it is. But I like to think that it's easier for you people than it is for me. <laughs> um, so instead of, that's what I think, it's not bad, that's bad. All right, so no, it's something that we all have to learn how to do, right? So instead of thinking, ah, I suck because I missed my dial session this morning, it's like, oh, well, I still have this afternoon, right? I'm going to do it this afternoon, right? Or I'm grateful that I got up and now I'm moving and now I'm going to do this, right? So you get to choose what you focus on, right? Again, it's not a cop out. It's just so that we, we don't start to spiral because everything is what we label it to be, right? Okay, so um, you decide the label. 
It is not a test of character. It is just a bundle of habits that um, we have to recreate. If you guys were at a family reunion, you saw our brain neuron thing that happened back and forth. Uh, Clay Murders was like, you should do the brain thing again. I was like, I don't, I don't, I think we would drive Am crazy with the camera throwing that brain back and forth. <laughs> All right, um, but you decide the label. You do not, I'm going to repeat, you do not have to be perfect. And thank God we do not have to be perfect. All right, but we just have to be consistent. So did you guys ever try archery? We, we did archery one time, right? We, Groupon. It was a Groupon. And I was like, oh, let's do this archery thing, right? Um, and so it would be cool if you got the bullseye. That would be great, right, if you got the bullseye. That's dramatic. That's awesome. That's exciting. But did you know if you hit anything on that round circle board that you get points? Did you know that? I didn't know that, right? If you just hit anything on there, you get points. I was like, shoot, just walk up there with that arrow and just stick it, you know, right? It doesn't have to go in the middle, you know? People will believe it if it's all if it's everywhere, right? You know, yeah. Put, it, Make put a some smile off face. the put some off the board, right? You know, so um, but the the frustrating thing with just being on the board is it's not dramatic and it's not exciting, right? There was a book that Andy had all of us read called Moneyball. It was a book about baseball. Yeah. Go sports. Yay! Yay! <laughs> was that good, Andy Riddle? Sports, sports analogy, sports, right? Sports, 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 sports. Yay! Sports. <laughs> you know. All right. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but with baseball, home runs are the dramatic Babe yep. Ruth right. point yep. at the bat, right? That thing that happens. But the point of baseball is just to get on base. Because if you can just get on base, then you'll win. And that was a whole book. There was a movie, if you don't want to read the book, it had Brad Pitt yeah. in it, yeah. right? For you young people. You can watch that. Right? There was a movie. But the whole point was they weren't trying, they couldn't afford the heavy hitters. They couldn't afford the home run names. So they got a bunch of people who could get on base. And they, that year that they tried practicing it, they almost won the They made World like Series? second or third place. Is that in the, baseball? Yeah. World Series? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a Super Bowl or some type of bowl. It's a World Series. Yeah. All right. Okay. So this is the last thing. This is the last section I'm going to say, and James is going to talk. Okay. So, all right. You should have huge goals for this year. All right. There are less than six months left in this year. You should have huge goals. Um, but we also need the baby goals, okay, for the month and for the week and for the day. And some of us really messed up ones for the hour, okay? <laughs> so that way we keep going, all right? We have to break down the huge goal into the baby goals because this is another thing that is not psychologically logical, okay? Is that if the goal looks too big, then we actually retreat too because our self-image and our identity doesn't really believe that we can do it okay and so we have to break it down into little things um so i have an example um business and not business right so uh, i was talking to paul roberts and you know how he runs a lot right like a lot you know and uh i think we were in captiva and i was asking him so like, how did you start running so much? Like, because he runs for hours, you know? I don't think I have run a mile since I was 12 years old. Because in high school, for PE, they let us take bowling. So I didn't have to run, right? I, like, threw a ball. I took 10 steps and threw a ball and took 10 steps back, you know? So I, had, I hadn't had to do a mile in forever, you know? And um, so he said, well, I don't remember if he said this is how I started or if he said this is just what he did. But, um, or if this is what people do, but he said, so the way that you start running, you build stamina, right? You build your, fo your willpower is uh, you run for a minute and then you walk for a minute. And then you run for a minute and you walk for a minute and you let your body like build up or something, right? Like sports people, okay, right? And that way you can actually run forever doing that, running and walking and running and walking. And I think I literally said to him, no, I don't think that would work. Like, I mean, I'm pretty sure I literally said that to him. And he just smiles, you know, because he's Paul Roberts. He just smiles. And, um, but I, I've been doing it, right? And so um, I think now I can run like five minutes and then walk a minute and then run for five, you know. I know, yeah, right? But that, was like, but that was like years. This was like Captiva. This was like years ago, you know. But it started with 
one minute and uh, walking and running, and then I was finally like, oh, it does work. Shoot, that means I have to keep doing it. <laughs> right? Because you know, right. if you could disprove it, that means you don't have to do it, right? right? I was like, oh, shoot, it's working. I can keep going. That sucks. Okay. <laughs> um, but in our business, okay, let's say that you want to run 20 appointments a week. That is what you want to do. I'm not saying that's what you have to do. I'm just saying if that's what you want to do, okay? But you're at five appointments a week right now. Then our goal for this week, because it's only Wednesday, is to book seven appointments, right? Because your identity can see yourself doing that. You, you could get enough resources to book two more than you normally do, right? And then you do that, and then guess what happens? You run your appointments, you make a couple sales, you do your emergency response, you get your referrals, you get a couple more leads, and then you do it again. But now your identity can believe that you can run, you can book eight appointments, nine appointments. Right, so then you build and you build and you build, so that way you can get to the 20. That way you can get to Alaska, Amen. right? Everyone did not start, like, it's not like people like Mark Hutchinson or SARS like were born, this, this man was built to, to run insurance appointments, right? He was born, you can see it in his eyes, the gleam, you know, it's a, that's not, this is not what happened, right? This was a, a process, right? The, the lights didn't shine, it's, it's crazy. So, um, the last thing is uh, we have to celebrate the small victories. When you, uh, when you achieve a goal that you set for yourself, I don't care what it is, we have to celebrate it, right? You celebrate um, with human babies, right? And I suppose with animal babies too, I don't know. Human babies, right? When they're learning to walk, you cheer and you celebrate, even though they barely walk and fall on their little butt. Right? But you are just screaming and excited and you're just so happy. And the baby's like, oh, let me try again. Right? And that's what happens. Because what would happen if you looked at that baby and you're like, that's it. <laughs> that's all you got. Didn't make it to the wall. Holding on to the table, too. What is that? Right? What a cop out. Right, well, if you said that to your baby, oh my gosh, right? Can, are you feeling some pain right now? Are you mad at me right now that I could possibly say that to a baby? Right? So that baby, it has human emotions. How are we not any different than that? So at your hotspot, you should never say, oh, I only did this this week, or I only did th That is not modesty, OK? That's not humility. That's just nonsense, right? You should, you know, stand up and be like, I wrote this. I did this, because that should be something that is celebrated. And for the love of God, if you're celebrating something, don't be like, Oh, good. Yay. Looking at your phone. No! That's also bad, right? It's the same thing if your child was trying to walk, right? And they're like, oh, that's, that's good. Uh-huh, honey, good job. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Like, how traumatized was this baby be? You know, that's not good. So at our hospitals, we have got to be recognizing if we are going to do the recognition. That's right. That's right. That's, right. that's good, Jenny. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm done. Okay. I think good. she was fired up. <laughs> All right, so Thank you. My husband's going to share with you some really good stuff, you know, because I looked at his notes. It was good. <laughs> Y'all, yeah. um, sometimes I, I think back, like, all the stuff, like, Andy Albright does so much for us. He does so much for us. Uh, he does this every week. I know. He does this every week. <laughs> you know, we uh, before conference, we were on the road for like three weeks. We went to California. We went to Alaska. We went to Baton Rouge, Kansas City. Did you go to New Jersey and New York? I don't remember. Like, we were on the road. Had, had conference right and then we're doing the twc we got the activity call on friday Yay. like <laughs> so like we're but let's put it this way usually usually whenever andy or somebody they ask us to do something like the twc or speak on stage or anything like that we practice for hours like we write everything out word for word, and then we practice it. We go back and forth. Oh, you don't? I didn't look here. Like let's change this. Let's fix that. And this week, I realized I was like, I've got to step it up. I've I've got to get better. As we, I can't just keep doing the same things I've done. 
and writing everything out word for word for word because if Andy had to do that every week, that's all he would do all week. Does that make sense? So that's what we, that's what we did to get here. But by golly, if we want to get, like, I, I've got to get better, right? Um, there's a, uh, I'm actually, I got internet on here. If uh, the, if they could type in NAA University and bring it. So I don't, I don't want to just, what I'm going to do right now, we've, we've done family reunion. We've talked about like everything that you, you we've got in your mind right. Now, what are you actually going to do? What are you actually going to do? So if I could get to go to, to uh, NAUniversity.com for me, that would be a huge help, big help for me. Uh, my fault. I, they, I don't, see, I don't want to do it. I don't want to just have it all ready up for you. I want to walk you through the process. <laughs> I want to walk you through it. Just like when I hire somebody, you don't just say, hey, go get your insurance license. I want to walk you through it. So if we go to NA, this is, what, this is how we get to where I'm about to show you, okay? We go to NA University, we scroll on Resources, Advanced Resources, all right? And then under Advanced Resources, one of Andy's um, worksheets is the Ready, Fire, Aim. Is it not working? You got to log in? Mm -hmm. it is oh, thing. shoot, you're right. We yeah. do got to log in for that one. Oh, well. You can keep talking. They'll pull it up. Yeah, they'll, they'll pull it up. <coughs> so um, in, this, in this worksheet, it's ready, fire, aim. So here's the, here's the thing. Um, if Andy had have waited till he... Man, I've been having my problems left and right there. Yeah. So if Andy had have waited until he knew everything that he needed to do to make this company successful, you and I would not be here. Right. Nothing would be here. Mm -hmm. And guess what? We still don't know everything we got to do. Andy still doesn't know everything. Like, we just rolled out the ark. Like, that's huge. That's huge. Well, if we'd have done it this way since day one, we'd be 10 times bigger. I know. But guess what? We can't. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. The second best time to plant a tree is today. Mm -hmm. That was a good proverb. That was good. Mm -hmm. Today. So I can't change that. I can't change 20 years ago, but I can change what I'm going to do today. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not the big, hairy, audacious goals, you know, uh, somebody, oh, this is funny. So last night I had this fantastic idea. Or at least in my head, it was this great idea. I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to post on, on Andy's band chat. I'm going to say, hey, I got these things that we want to cover. Well, I'm going to post on the band chat and see what questions everybody else has. And Jane, Jane and I was like, probably going to have like a thousand questions. People are going to like, we're going to have like a bunch of people asking questions. I, there's no way I'm going to be able to get on I you know, answer them all. Talk. We don't have the questions. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so I posted on, on the band chat, and oh my God, three whole people asked a question. <laughs> I was like, I'm not as popular as I thought I was. Oh, number one in my heart, baby. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, so first off, that tells us, hey, maybe... Um, people don't know about the band chat. Like, this is a big thing. It's if you want to get somebody started, they need to know about the band chat. So there's this program called Band, B-A-N-D. Uh, just go on your app store, get on there, get somebody to invite you to Andy's. Well, I'm in my, my manager's group. Well, get, get somebody to invite you to Andy's group as well, because that's the whole team. That's the whole team. Um, all right. So we click on Resources. Advanced resources, and then we're going to scroll down to the, we're going to look for the, see this, this is how, when people are like, where do you go to get that? I do this every time. I'm like, it's on there. I don't see it. Well, the only thing I'm going to do is log on there and look for it, <laughs> just like you. 
<laughs> so uh, we want the uh, ready, fire, aim thing. It's probably that's magical movement of lines. I think we just did. We just ah, there we are. Okay. Boom. Boom. All right. So to get on there, log on, print this out. This is something that this is a basic that we don't really talk about much anymore. This is something people, we need to know this stuff. Um, so have you ever heard the term getting started half, is half the job or half the battle or I don't know, there's like 10,000 different ways of saying it. Why, why is that the case? Well, because that, that's how life works. Like half the battle is just getting up and making, showing up and making your first dial. Yep. That yep. first dial, I don't know about y'all, if you're anything like me, shoot. That first dial every morning, it's a battle. It's a battle. Once I make that first dial and get cursed out the first time or whatever, I'm like, I'm fine <laughs> after that. But that first one is just like, let me, uh, let me, uh, let me see. Let me check my email one more time. Or, um, or my, my, shoe's on, my shoe's not a little, little loose. Let me, let me time it like everything I can do to keep from making that first dial. That's why getting started is half the battle. Like, it's hard to do. So you finish, you, you get started, then you go to somebody and ask for help. Most people, they're like, well, teach me everything, and then I'll get started. Unfortunately, like, you're going to have to make 10 phone calls before I can really help you get to that next echelon that you want to get to. You got to make 20 phone calls because it's not good. The synapses in your brain is not going to make any, it's not going to connect anything unless you've actually picked up the controller and played the darn game yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay? All my video game buddies out there fired up right now. <laughs> so you pick up a bat. It's and like, swing it, you know, like that. There you go. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Just, just like that. Yeah. 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 She. The word I'm looking for. Translated. Mm -hmm. She translated. So, what do we do? What do we actually do? Well, we sell, we recruit, and we build. That's what we do. Okay? So, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go into how we do these things. All right? So, First thing you got to do is you got to figure out how much you need to sell. So, for everybody in this room, the amount that you need to sell to survive, to make ends meet, to get all your bills paid, that's different for everybody in this room. Mm -hmm. For some people, that's $2,000 a month. For some people, that's $6,000 a month. For some people, that's $12,000 a month. I don't know what that number is for you, but it's going to be different for you than it is for you than it is for you than it is for you, all right? It's going to be different for everybody. So whatever that number is, ooh, I'm going to take a step back from that. So this is, what, this is what Jane and I did. This is what Jane and I did. Let's say that number was more than we were, let's say it was bigger than average, okay? What we did was we tried to figure out everything we could cut out to make that number that we needed to make to, for all our bills to be paid to get as small as possible. Mm -hmm. We canceled every cable service. We didn't, you know, m mow the lawn. Like, we... Yeah, still those neighbors. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> What'd you say? Those neighbors that brought down your property. Back. Yes. Yeah, with the yeah, we were those neighbors. Uh -huh. Like... Yeah. Our mow we, lawn wasn't mowed either. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, we were making money selling insurance. We didn't go out and buy a new car. I st uh, just recently, six months ago, I just, guys, I, we were making almost $400,000 a year before I bought my first car. For a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. For a couple, of, oh yeah, multiple years. Multiple years. So we, I'm not saying that's what you got to do. I'm saying this is what we did to make it as easy as possible on ourselves, okay? Because well, so, I love it when people, 
I, I, we were talking about, no, I don't watch TV, James. I don't have cable. Like, most people don't have cable. Like, they're, they're trying to trick me into thinking I don't know that Netflix exists. <laughs> Try, no, James, I don't watch TV. No, oh, oh Netflix is TV? Uh, like, like, there's a, oh, oh, you're right, I do watch, I do watch TV. Oh, be no, nice. it's, it's, I don't watch TV, it's just Hulu. There's no commercials. Be nice. You have to be the nice yes. one. Yes, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> so we take that number, we compress it, we make it as small as we possibly can. Okay? Not forever. Not forever. But. Oh, yeah, exactly. So the, I, I know at some point in, during conference, somebody talked about the, uh, the spider monkeys and they, they, how they trap. So there's this. There's this monkey, I want to say in South America somewhere, called the spider monkeys. Little things. Little monkeys. Cutie, cute little things. For some reason, I don't know what it is. Poachers try to, ca poachers try to catch them. I don't know if they're going to eat them or if they're going to skin them I don't, or make, make trophies. I don't know what, why they want to catch these poor spider monkeys. But they catch these poor spider monkeys. And what they do to catch these spider monkeys, is that what they do is they reach, they drill a hole into the tree just big enough for that poor monkey to slip his hand in like this. And they put his favorite snack in there, some kind of nut. And he reaches in there, and he grabs hold of him. And now he's made a fist. He can't get his hand out. It's because there are spikes going into that hole. Remember? They drew the hole. So they can't get their hand out. All that what happens is poacher, all he's got to do is walk up to him, bop him on the head, throw him, <laughs> in the, throw him in the cage. But see, the monkey, while, that, while this is going on, while this is going on, the spider monkey, he, he's watching the poacher walk up to him. He's yeah. watching death walk up to him. And he's freaking out. He's like, ah, ah. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> if you are listening to this and not watching this, you just missed out. I'm just saying. Y'all yeah. <laughs> having too much fun with me. Huh? <laughs> this is my game show. <laughs> He's freaking out. But if he would just let go of that snack, if he'd just let go of the pride, like he'd just let go, he'd be able to get his hand out yeah. and run for freedom. Right? So what happens is a lot of times people come to us, they come to this business, and they're like, James, I've got this nice house, I've got this nice car, I've got all this stuff that I've built up to this point. And they come here and they're like, I want, now I've got all this stuff, now I want freedom. I've built myself a cage. Mm. I've built myself a cage of mediocrity of things that are not quite exactly what I wanted, but, you know, it's a nice enough house. It's a nice enough car. My, the, my kids go to a nice enough school. It's not exactly what I've always dreamed of, but it's, it's, it's good enough. They got that snack in their hand, and their dream, like, if they would just let go of, the, of, of good enough, they could get their dream. They could chase their dream. But they're stuck in their cage. They're stuck in the tree. They can't chase. They can't run to their dream because their hand's just stuck in there. They won't let go. So Jane and I... We're also watching the poacher or whatever come with the bat. We are, like, we're, we're holding on to the thing and we're like, but I don't want to let go. But we often see it coming. We're not, we're really not oblivious to it. We can act oblivious to it, right? But we do... See it coming, and some of us do yell like a spider monkey <laughs> as it's happening, but we still won't let go. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So, what Jane and I did, we were in very, 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 very nice house in Annapolis, Maryland. Million dollar house on the water in downtown Annapolis, Maryland, like literally like five minutes from downtown. And, but it was like, it was like this whole just like little oasis. There's nothing but nice houses and 
we right on the water, and the, the snowy egrets or whatever would come in, and the fox would run through, and you'd see deer out there, like, and five minutes from downtown Annapolis, Maryland, and like, how the heck does this thing even exist this close to the capital of the state? And then like, you jump in the car, and you're right there next to like the nicest restaurants. So I remember one time Andy looked at me during this point, and he's like, you know, James, when I was as poor as you, <laughs> what I'd be doing is I, instead of with love, with love, because, you know, I'm like, damn, I made a quarter million dollars last year. When, I, when he was as poor as me. Thank God for Andy Albright's, Andy Albright's dream being big enough for more than just him, right? So, we let, I'm not saying this is what you need to do, this is what we did. We let go of the nice house. We forewent buying the nice car, new cars and all this, all this other things so that way we could afford, we got somebody sharp, intelligent, responsible, ambitious, now we can afford to help somebody out. Because guess what? They're more than likely, I want to make it easier for them. More than likely, they're going to be going through something as crazy, if not crazier, than what we were going through. And by golly, like, I just realized he's got the same shirt as I do. We just bought that shirt. <laughs> Freaking me out. Looking good, man. So, um. That was woo. squirrel, right? <laughs> squirrel moment. I've seen that shirt everywhere now. It's freaking me out, dude. It's freaking me out. It's freaking me out, dude. So we. Particular activation. <laughs> duplication, that's right. So we took our bills and we shrunk it down as much as we possibly could. That's not what you got to do. That's what we did. All right. Now, you have to get out there and sell. You get out there. Now, here's the other thing. If you've already got a job, if you found us and you've already got a job, this is the, like that pays the bills. The bills are already paid, James. I was just looking for something extra. Wanted to, I wanted to make some extra money. Here's what I would do. I'd keep that job that you already have. You already know how to do it. Like it's no ifs, ands, buts about it. It's like you've already, you already know how to do it. It's, it's, doesn't it's take a done away deal. From your willpower, you already know how right. To do it. Doesn't take away from your willpower. So now let's say it's an eight to five job. On a part time basis, you sell as much insurance as you can. So that way you can afford like whatever that no, like whatever that number is that you need to make, now double or triple it. It's okay to make more than you need. It's not okay to make less than you need. <laughs> right, key. That's a key. Okay? Mm -hmm. You make more money. You make more sales. You sell more insurance. Double or triple. So now you have all this extra that you can take and pour into building your freedom. Right. Buying your freedom. All those, like, all those different places, post ads, Helping somebody out with their first batch of leads, you know, because you hire a 22 year old, it's not surprising they're 22 years old and they don't have three, five hundred dollars extra just sitting in their bank account, right? Mm -hmm. That's not surprising. If you hire somebody that's 40, 50, 60, and they ain't got, it's a little different, but like you hire somebody 22 years old, like come on, have have two, three, four hundred dollars extra, leader. Is, and this is using discretion, right? You don't do it for every right. single 22-year-old that you meet. You do it for the 22-year-olds, or not the 20, but you do it for the, the ones that are doing the right things. The, the, the Alliance Aidens, mm -hmm. the intelligent, responsible, ambitious ones, the ones that are doing things, the ones that are, we'll get, we'll get on, we got, we got a whole, we got time, we'll get more into that. So now, I would stay in the field until this number well surpassed this number. So this is your, this is your freedom. This is your, so let's, let's just say $10,000 a month that you need to make to pay all your bills. Just even call it math for Marines. Nice simple round number. All right. So whatever that number is, now that's how much you've been, you've been selling twice as much. Now your overrides. St keep that part, keep that job. Or if you're full time with this, keep put, pouring it, pouring it, pouring it until this number exceeds, not just barely meet, not 20% under, 
not 10% under, exceeds. And I, if I, would, I would keep doing it until it was like treble or triple that number. We get a lot of people that like, James, I'm, I just wanna, just wanna quit my job, I wanna quit my job, I wanna quit my job, which we're all fired, like yes, you can make a ton, for some reason, they had 40 hours, 40, 50, 60 hours at that other job, and they're part-time with us, and they've got this much time to devote to it. But for some reason, they're able to sell two, three, four, five thousand dollars a week, ish, you know, in submitted business or issue paid business, while they're part-time with us, and all of a sudden, they're like, James, I'm just tired of it, tired of it, tired of it, I'm gonna quit that job, that boss man said the wrong thing to me, and then they quit. And now for some reason, they can't seem to get out of bed in the morning hmm. anymore. What book was that? Um, the Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah. It was. It was yeah. C.S. Lewis. Uh, what, what's that? Do you I remember that? Book it was. No, do you remember the quote? Like the the fight for slavery. Like. Yeah, it's the so it's the Chronicles of Narnia, right? The the animals talk in the in the book, the movie, and um, the horses were galloping and they were fighting this uh, war against the the wicked. Witch, Queen, whatever. Queen, not Wizard of Oz, but you know, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. But it, it's one of the books. It's not the Lion, but it, it, that was a series. And the horses are galloping toward this war, and they're literally looking each, at each other. And they said something like, "How come we galloped harder? How come we fought harder when we had a man on our back and a bridle, on our mouth and a whip, than we are now that we're fighting for our own freedom?" Yes. This isn't a children's book, right? right? <laughs> But it's the horses that have been liberated from having the saddle on their back, and they're like, "How come we're f how come we worked harder we're and longer hours?" Just at a comfortable pace. Yeah. Just at a comfortable pace. So that's what I would do. Does this make sense, to everybody? Okay. So now, first thing, now that we know how much you need to sell, now that you know how much you need. You need resources. Mm -hmm. You need resources. A lot of times, okay, so here's what I would do. If I were getting started brand new today, this is what I would do. First thing I would do I'd, to get that money that I need to make to build my business, I would, I wouldn't just jump straight into the leads. This is what I would do. I would sit down, I'd sit, I'd call everybody in my phone, I'd schedule about 10 appointments with friends, family, local people that live in my area, and I'd sit down with 10 people and practice with them. Practice with them. And it's, the goal is not, don't get me wrong, the goal is not to sell them insurance. The goal is to practice. Sit down with 10 people. Now here's the catch, here's the kicker, here's the crazy thing. You practice with 10 people, guarantee you two or three of them are going to be like, what's your name, bud? Nick. Nick, Nick Sabino. Nick Sabino. Yeah. I guarantee you, Nick, two or three of them are going to be like, well, Nick, this all sounds great. When can you actually start selling this stuff? Like, this is something you can do now while you are getting, like, you're not even licensed yet. You can practice now. You don't have to wait till you're licensed to practice. Start, like, that's, that's the first thing I would do. Because a lot of people are like, well, I don't want, I don't want it's, it's easier to sell to strangers. No, it is not. Right. <laughs> it is not. It, the first time you see a, an application, the first time you try to use the software, it would be 10 times easier if you would practice beforehand. Mm -hmm. Okay? Here's the crazy thing. One of those 10 would be myself. I want to practice with me, my wife, or people on our team. I say, here's what I would do. I would get on the phone with Jane. I'd schedule a time for you and your wife, you and your husband, to be on the phone together and have her conduct an appointment with you on the phone and say, Jane, if you sat down with somebody like me, our situation, show me what you would show us. That's, the, that's one of the absolute first things I would do. Now, you've gotten trained. You bought a policy on yourself. You make commission on that policy. 
you get 50% off or whatever, the, the, whatever, depending on what it was that she wrecked. Now you've probably learned something more than just the term, the whole life, the guaranteed issue, because Jane might say, hey, IUL or whatever, a single premium. Like, she, practice. Okay? So many people, I tell them this, it seems logical, right? So many people, I tell them this, and they fight me on it. They fight us on it. Like, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be mean. For credibility's sake, we did this thing, like, we did the numbers. We, had a, we didn't have a single full-timer last year that actually worked 40-plus hours a week and made less than $100,000 with us last year. Every single one of them. So I, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying, well, if you want to, it's kind of like somebody says, James, you've been losing a bunch of weight, haven't you? How did you do it? And I'm like, well, diet and exercise. Well, no, no, other than that. Right? <laughs> Tell me the secret. Tell me the secret. And I'm like, well, I did, did some, changed my diet, and then I did more exercise. <laughs> You know, so when, when we're covering, when, when your manager, when your trainer is trying to help you get up and running, it's so that way you're as successful as possible. Because right. guess what? We only get paid when you get paid. Mm -hmm. So we want you to get paid. Like we want you to succeed as much as you want to succeed. When you're, when you're going to fight us on every little thing, it's challenging. I'm going to have to find somebody that's not going to fight us mm -hmm. on the basics of like the logical thing. Like if you walked into a, a car dealership. If you walked into a car dealership to buy a Chevy, and he was, uh, he was like, he drove a Ford. You'd be like, I'm gonna go over to Ford. No, you need to buy this Chevy. Well, you drive a Ford. Mm. It's kind of weird. It is weird. <laughs> It'd be kind of weird. It's so, a wait. You're, you're selling life insurance, but you're. Don't have any. Oh, I got a policy from 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Fantastic. Practice with your manager. Have them show that you them. Because do you think you're never going to sit down with somebody? In fact, most people you sit down with are going to have some type of policy from years ago. And most people, if they don't, I'm freaking out. Most people already have some type of life insurance. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do when you come across that? Practice. So that way, when it happens, not if it happens, when it happens, okay? Um, so you now, that's what I, now you sat down with 10 friends, 10 family, people local in your area, you practiced 10 times, you probably made one, two, three sales. You didn't force their hand, you didn't, you didn't shove it down their throat, you just practiced. Now, if you've practiced the way we told, taught you to, you probably got about 20 to 30 ERSs as well. Referrals, emergency response systems for people that are brand new. So now, now, instead of being getting your trying to get your manager, your upline, or whoever's helping you out to be like, hey, I'd love some help, two, three, four hundred dollars worth of leads. Now they're fired up about helping you get two, three, four hundred dollars worth of leads. You've sold, you have now sold me on you're the type of person I'm looking for that I would like to invest in. Does that make sense? So now I'm like, here's leads. You got, you got all these ERSs, these, these other leads, but now I'm going to pour gas on the fire instead of trying to friggin' light the fire myself. Mm -hmm. like, like rubbing two sticks together. We don't camp very often. <laughs> So now you've got resources. You got a stack of leads. You take that money, you take it, you pay your bills, everything that you got to do, break even, and every dime that you can afterwards. And if, now this is what I wanted. I wanted to, I didn't want to just, like I'd, I'd been top sales guy and every, like it was always number one and number two. Me and Jane always fighting for number one and number two. Every sales organization we'd ever been at been a part of uh, with Empire, I think um, I still got a record with this company that still, to my knowledge, has not been broken. All right? I was working six days a week, seven days a week, six and a half days a week, basically, to do that. When I came here, I was like, wait, 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 you mean to tell me I can make just as much money 
and three or four days a week selling, which gives me the freedom to be able to build it, build a massive business. That's what I saw when I came here. So this is what, this is, this is every, Jane was like, I just want to pay the bills. I just want to pay those. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa we're going to get rich. That's nice. That's we're going gonna, gonna to get wealthy. We're going to make it so that way, while we're in Alaska, our money is still coming in, and we're not freaking out. Ah, trying to pretend we're having a good time because we're, we're still thinking about what we got to do when we get home. Mm. Does that make sense? It's a different kind of freedom. <coughs> different kind of, there's a difference between having money and it coming in <laughs> every month. Like, I paid cash for that Jaguar last year. Mm. It's different than having to make payments. Does that make sense? Gratification is a is a temporary thing. You don't have to be a martyr and just keep delaying, keep delaying for the rest of your life. Right. But you do it for a period, for a season, so that way you can be in Alaska and not stressed out. You can buy a car and not be stressed out. You can. So the delayed gratification is for a season. It's not to be self-sacrificial martyr. You know, it's for a season, so that way you can have other things. So. James, where and how do I get leads for building my team? How do I get leads for building a, a massive business? So I'm selling insurance. Now what do I do? What do I do with all this extra money I'm making? Well, Andy Albright always says one of the first things he would do would be he would hire a secretary, a staff person to help you do your paperwork. Guess what? It is a challenge hiring staff. It is a new set of problems. So like when you're playing a video, all my video game buddies out there, you're playing a video game, you beat level one. Guess what happens? Level two is not easier than level one. But you get like these extra new powers that you get to learn how to use. But you got to learn how to use them. Does that make sense? It's, well, I got the power, I, got, I can throw all these Dragon Balls now, but I, what good does it do you if you don't know how, like what to do with it? What good is that bonus power if you don't, if you're not going to use it effectively? Okay, so hiring a staff person. Good luck with that. Have fun with it. Get ready. It's not easy. Have have uh, somebody help you. That's that's what your manager's for. That's what you know, Robbie Kraft has been huge helping us finding staff over the years. They're harder to find with than agents. But once you find a good one, life saving for you and your time. Because you've been here getting trained and you're like, oh my gosh, I get paid for my results. And all of a sudden you're trying to pay some, they want a salary or an hourly thing. And you're like, but they haven't done the work, but they still want to get paid. Like I, I, with the first staff person, I'll give you a horror story here. <laughs> first staff person we ever hired, she sat there and for like a week watching me. I'm training her. At the end of the week, she quit. And then she wanted a check. <laughs> and I'm like, you haven't worked yet. But legally, I had to pay her. Part of doing business. Learned a lesson. I talked to Ravi, I talked to Andy. He's like, yeah, I wouldn't do that again. <laughs> Here's how I would do it. And they, they fixed me. They tweaked. But if I hadn't got, made that mistake, We'd still be, well, first off, my, my handwriting is horrible, so, you know, the paperwork would have, we've, we've, we learned things as we went. So now, next thing I would do is I'd start taking every dime I could, and I started investing it in places like Craigslist, like ZipRecruiter, like, like well, James, what, people, they, they, they seem to think that, like, where do you post? Everywhere. If it's, you know, you, when you post an ad on Craigslist, a lot of times these, these other places will, be, will send you an email saying, hey, you should try posting on our place. I tried all of them. Every single one that came to me was 50 bucks, 250 bucks, 500 bucks. I'd try it. But we were making so much money selling insurance, we could afford to do that. Let me take a step back before even that. The fastest and easiest way before you even start investing money in that kind of stuff, why don't you just pull out your phone, call 5, 10, 15 of your buddies. Say, hey, got this guy, Andy Albright, got this guy, James Hill, got this guy, Andy Riddle, got this guy, Justin Balick. 
North Carolina, down in Miami, wherever they're at. Got this big project, Mutual of Omaha, they're looking for some help. They just they asked me if I knew anybody that might be looking. I figured, hey, I just want to see if you might be interested. And you just do that, or have somebody help you do that. Because guess what? That's free. Mm. Craigslist and, and Indeed and all those other places, that's like thousands of dollars. Why don't you practice on the free stuff? Because a lot of times people, I just, wanna, I just want you to give me those free, I want, you to, I want you to buy me leads, but you're not willing to do the free thing. Mm. Ah. What I do is I post, all, I post everywhere. All the places that you can find, post there. And then every week, you know, my stack, I make... However many calls it is a week, I've got to stack this high of people that I've talked to. What I do is I disperse them. The people that I didn't get in touch with, I disperse all the other ones out to my two, three, four, six other people that say they want to recruit. And I send them my old leads, just like on the sales dials. Now I do that with the resumes, too. Ah. So that way, they can practice on my old, you know, this help is this helping guys so there's a thousand other things that we want to cover here's what I would do I'd find out where your local hotspot is I'd find out what the next with tomorrow we've got a conference call do we know who's hosting tomorrow's product call yet tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern we've got a product call that's going to be going on Friday morning James and Jane are doing the activity call um, I hope this business works out half as well. I hope this business works out as well for you as it has for Jane and I. I hope this business works out as well for you as it has for Andy Albright. Like, guys, we need some help. We need you. We need you. We need you. We appreciate everything you guys have done. We will see you on the next one. Keep moving forward, y'all. <laughs>